Spring has finally arrived here in central Ohio, and the old adage that April showers bring May flowers has never been more accurate. But it also makes my grass grow so fast I can't keep up with it. And the recent abundance of rain showers has the rivers and streams swelling here in Ohio. There's also been some local flooding that's made it difficult to travel or even get to work. And the closer you get to Buckeye Lake, the worse it gets. Thankfully, where we live, our house is at a higher elevation. But that doesn't mean we haven't had problems. Our backyard is a mess and the creek crossing has once again washed out, primarily due to debris that floats down the creek and plugs my culverts. So job number one for me and June Pup on Wednesday morning was to get the excavator out and deal with what's going on in the backyard. Then it was time to start shuffling vehicles around. We've got the El Camino all cleaned up and detailed so that Vicky and I can take it on a trip this weekend up to Amish country as long as the weather holds out. But for right now, I need to move it out and move the Malibu in so we can work on the gas gauge and hopefully find a permanent solution to that problem. Preferably before I drive it to the north end of Columbus for an alignment. Who is it, girl? What are you doing? Who is it, baby? You better get him. What's going on, my friend? <laughs> Another day. They were all that size. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Thanks, brother. Our UPS guy dropped off some decals for the Falcon, so me and June Pup delivered them to the back shop, and that's when I remembered there's another problem back there waiting on my attention. The fuel pump mounting hardware on Billy's Nova takes special studs, and one of them got left in the engine when it got delivered to Mike Henson's in Oklahoma. Since the hardware for these fuel pump mounts are on back order, I placed a call to my Uncle Tim, who specializes in custom machine work and can make the bolts that I need. He told me to bring everything up to him so he could get me fixed up. But when I got up there, I realized that Tim also has his own problems to deal with after all these torrential rains. When I pulled into Tim's, I realized that about half of his driveway has washed out and the vast majority of it is laying in the road down at the bottom of the hill. It was at that point I made up my mind if Tim's gonna take time out of his day to help me with my problems, the least I could do is take some time out of my day to help him with his. The stud that we need is 7 16 coarse thread on one end and 3 8 fine thread on the other. So he chucked a 7 16 bolt up in the lathe, turned one end of it down and threaded it to recreate the hardware that got left in the engine that's now in Oklahoma. Once Tim finished it up, I brought it back to the shop to present it to Junior. I brought you a present. What you got? Oh, very nice. That saved me a lot of money and probably a few days worth of time because these standoffs are like $85 on Jags and they're out of stock. Nice. So. Well, I stole a couple hundred dollars out of your money bag up there and gave it to Uncle Tim. A couple hundred? <laughs> <laughs> when someone takes time out of their busy schedule to help you at the last second, it should never be taken for granted. And believe me when I tell you, this isn't the first time my Uncle Tim has dropped everything he was doing to help us with a problem. He's always reluctant to take any money, and I always tell him to call me if he needs anything. But typically, Tim isn't the kind of person to call for help. Most of the equipment that Tim has is on steel tracks and can't go out on the road. So once any of his gravel gets washed out onto the pavement, he pretty much just writes it off. Unfortunately, the gravel I'm collecting off the road for him was just delivered a week or two ago. Since Tim would have likely never called for help, I loaded up my little John Deere and brought it up to Tim's and collected as much of his gravel off the road as I possibly could. While it was important to me to get it back in the driveway and off the road for obvious reasons, I also had concerns that someone on a motorcycle may come over that hill and hit the stuff laying in the road and have an accident. So anyway, I got the road and the driveway cleaned up and put back as best I possibly could. But before I loaded the tractor up to go home, I drove it about a half a mile up the road and back to clean off the tires as best I could before I load the tractor back on the trailer and take it home. While I was up at my Uncle Tim's helping him with his driveway, back at my shop, Tanner was working on my Malibu and had managed to get the fuel tank dropped down out of it so we can try to come up with a solution to the fuel gauge sending unit problem. That after replacing the third sending unit in my aeromotive tank, I would like to put behind me once and for all. What's the, uh, what's the verdict here? So I had to kind of doctor something together here because this was the factory style pickup. Right. for the factory tank, but we don't have a factory tank. So this is what keeps going bad in your tank. So when it's all the way up, it's supposed to read 90 ohms because it's a zero to 90 ohm system. So when it reads 90 ohms, it tells the fuel gauge that it's full mm -hmm. and that'll put it at full. Right. So then obviously this is zero ohms, this is 90. So 
what happens is these go bad and for some reason when it's all the way up here you can put a voltmeter on it right here and right here and it reads 140 ohms and that's why your fuel gauge goes pegged way past full because it's at 140 and it's like oh it's really full so you wanted to try a factory style and I had to doctor something together to get it to mount on the aeromotive bracket. So I had to take one of the old ones that I saved and it had pop rivets here and here. So I had to cut the rivets out of that one and I cut the rivets out of this one. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any rivets that are long enough to go all the way through. So I found two little screws that just screwed right in here, held it on. That'd be fine. Screwed it right in place. And now all I have to do is put one wire end on this, plug it into the white wire that's coming out of the tank, and you have a factory style sending unit. Sending unit. We'll see how long this one lasts. Yeah, hopefully longer because it took a minute to make. Basically, I was getting about a month or 300 miles. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. just not going to work out for me. No. While Tanner and I are in my shop working on the Malibu trying to resolve the sending unit problem, Another one of my problems is about to leave the driveway. Today is the day that the owner of the orange and black Nova out in the new shop is coming to pick the car up and drive it for the first time since we put strange brakes, a strange rear end, a TKX 5-speed transmission in it, and dialed in the ignition timing, the carburetor, and the automatic choke so that the car will fire up and run whenever he wants to take it up the road. The car had terrible road manners when Josh dropped it off, and this is the first opportunity he's had to drive it since we've set it up in tune. That's pretty good. <laughs> when Josh took this car in on trade, it had a 454 in it with a four-speed. He immediately replaced the 454 with a 572 crate motor, but the car also had some janky looking chip foose wheels on it, which we replaced with a beautiful set of RC comps and replaced the stock 10 bolt rear end with a strange nine inch. We also installed Viking Crusader dual adjustable shocks at each corner, relocated the rear shocks to the inside of the frame rails, and installed a set of Caltrack bars to help the Nova chassis put the power to the ground and eliminate wheel hop. With the carburetor and the choke dialed in and the ignition timing locked out with a 6AL box, the Nova is easily a high 10 second car on motor while running on readily available 92 octane pump gas, which makes for a really fun street car. All right, honest opinion. 10 million times better than it ever was. <laughs> it was pretty bad when you brought it here. It was a pile of shit when I brought it here. It's actually really fun now. It's a million times better. Josh is obviously really happy with his Nova now, and since he's taken it home, it's gonna free up some space in the shop that we'll fill up with other projects. Preferably after we get some of our own ongoing projects finished first. Now, I don't know how things go in your shop, but in our shop, it seems like even the most simple tasks and projects take forever. And such has been the case with trying to get a lot of these problems with my Malibu resolved since we got back from Florida. Now that we have the fuel level sending unit replaced, Steve's working on pulling the carburetor off and replacing the nitrous solenoids on the car that began leaking after I fixed an electrical problem that cost us a race in Florida. While Tanner's busy working on the Malibu up in the front shop, June Pup and I went out back and unloaded the John Deere off the trailer and unhooked the trailer from the truck. Meanwhile, out in the new shop, Dave's busy finishing up some new workbenches for Billy that should help organize and remove some of the clutter off the project carts, which is another one of our ongoing never-ending issues that I'd love to find a resolution for. Anyway, about that time Tommy pulled in to bring Scrappy Doo home, and Tanner asked me to come to the front shop to check out the Malibu. We ready to fire it up? Yeah. All right. Sometimes it seems like for every one problem we resolve, two more pop up. If you remember, Bucko just went through my air conditioning and heating system and basically replaced everything but one item. Now what? Let's see if Bucko just forgot the tightening clamp. We fired the car up to check for leaks in the fuel system, but found one in the cooling system instead. Within just a couple of minutes of idling in the shop, Tanner noticed some antifreeze dripping from the one part that Bucko refused to replace. If that freaking heater core is junk, the one that he got out of the junkyard and polished, I'm gonna...
Yeah, man. You remember Mark gave you a brand new heater core for my Malibu and you refused to use it? Yeah. You got one out of the junkyard and you polished it all up? I pressure tested it. Why? Because it's leaking. All right, I'll be right over. Now, when Bucko says he'll be right over, that could be 10 minutes or 10 hours. Nobody ever really knows. So Tanner made some adjustments and we moved on to looking for other problems. You ready? Yep, turn it around. We now move on to looking for nitrous leaks, if there are any. No leaks. I heard everything pressurized. We ain't got no leaks though. Well, that's, that's a win. There's win number one. So now what we're gonna do is turn the system on power up the controller, hopefully be able to communicate with the controller after we get our updates. I don't know what updates this thing needs, but we gotta wait for the updates, whatever the hell that means. The next source of frustration and increase in blood pressure for me came in the form of updates to my computer, which I didn't ask for. Tension is now rising for me and June Pup, but for different reasons. That's the face she made when she bit and tried to bite me when you were under the car last time. Jen, I'm not doing nothing. I promise. She's got her eye right on. I promise. <laughs> it's all right, honey. He's not bothering nobody. All right. all right. Oh, come on. Now what? I've already set up my PC. I don't want to customize my experience. I just want to. I just want to connect him. Nitrous controller. Because all this, I don't need any of this. What? Decline. Decline it. I don't need any of this. I just want to hook to my nitrous controller. You're all set, close, shut, just be done. All right, fine. Hey, there we go. Oh, well, now what? Is this thing doing anything? We're gonna start with stage one. We're gonna turn stage two off, start with stage one. And it has a one and a half second ramp. So it's gonna start at 10%, go to 100% in a second and a half. We're just gonna make sure that it works. And once we make sure number one stage works, we'll switch to number two, and hopefully we don't have any problems. We're going to disable stage one and enable stage two. We'll try it again. Thank God. Everything is fixed. I think everything is fixed now except for the front end alignment. Yep, that's the only thing we need to do. Fuel gauge works. Gas gauge works. The nitrous kit's back. I did a little bit of tweaking on the carburetor. I changed the low speed air bleeds to take a little fuel away from it on tip in. Um, kind of interested to see how that works when we take it. Jen, what are you doing? Oh, she lost her ball under yeah, the car. Yeah, her ball's under the car. Well, maybe if this weather would cooperate, we could take it up the road and, I don't know. It's been snowing, it's been raining. I was gonna say, I was on my way to work and I saw snow on the ground. I was a little confused. I don't know. Maybe once those roads dry up, we can take it up the road. Sounds like a plan. About 45 minutes later, Buckwheat pulled in the driveway to come check out his warranty claim. All the way. <laughs> she caught it. Hey, look what he's got in his hand. A mocha fucky auto. A mocha fucky auto. What are you two, just two stooges doing? Staying around here something? Yeah, waiting on you pretty much. We already fixed it. What was it? The hose was loose. Malpractice. Malpractice. It was leaking off of this hose right here, and I just loosened it and shoved it all the way back on until it was almost all the way back. And Malpractice. Tighten it up a little bit more than what you tightened it up. We have all the heater cores gone. I said it's leaking. Well, it wasn't the heater core, was it? It was your installation. Typically, when you make a mistake, it's not your mistake. It's somebody else's fault. So when there's a warranty claim on your labor, <laughs> you are the one that gets called. Because if anybody else touches it, oh my God. Well, it wasn't me. It was Steve. It was Rob. So it was June Pup. It needed slightly adjusted. That's what warranties are for. 
Hey, I got a leak. I'll come check it out. Oh, it's nothing. Tighten it up. Done. Why wasn't it tight to begin with? Maybe it was, and then after it heated up and shrank back, and it moves around. Yeah. Jeez. That's normally people keep it for a couple days after a repair and run it and check it and then be like, hey, it's good to go. Come on over. So now it looks like we're down to just test driving the Malibu, but we're still waiting for the weather to improve enough to dry up the roads before we take it up the road and turn the nitrous kit on. So we turn our focus to other problems like the trailer tire that I noticed this morning was low on air when I walked past it on the way to the new shop. Tanner went ahead and pulled it off the trailer and noticed that it had a nail in it. Of course, it's not in the tread. It's in the sidewall where it can't be repaired. So at this point, we went ahead and pulled the Malibu out of the shop to bring another problem child in. The new prototype ATM Dominator carburetor that's on Billy's 55, in my opinion, needs some lighter return springs installed on the primary and secondary throttle shafts. So Tanner's going to work on that while I run down to Buckeye Lake to pay a visit to Mark. I need to pick up a replacement headlight for the replacement headlight that's leaking water. What are you doing down there? Cleaning shelves. Cleaning shelves? Keep myself busy. That's probably a good thing. How's your foot doing? It's better. I'm out of the boot today. You having a rough day? I am. Tyler's a no-show today. Yeah. Tyler's a no-show. Well, well, well. No-show. Probably well, time to shit can him. <laughs> Banish him to the rag shop? Banish him to the rag store. You got a headlight for me? Yeah. So it appears that I'm not the only one with an abundance of problems. And Mark's problems are definitely relatable. Anyway, I left Mark's to head to the other end of Buckeye Lake to the tire shop that Tanner used to work at. When he came to work for me, he told me that they stock these trailer tires I use, so I took my wheel and tire down there thinking I'd just get a tire put on while I wait. But it didn't quite work out that way. They've got to order one in. So, yet another delay. And unfortunately, the roads never seem to get dry enough to take the Malibu out and test the nitrous kit. But it does sound like Tanner's made some progress with the carburetor on Billy's 55. was so stiff before it actually took time for me to get it to the floor yeah like it wasn't like i could just get it to the floor it was like am i gonna bend the throttle am i gonna break the cable yeah so yeah that's way better i'm, I'm much happier with that and hopefully it'll help getting quick treat a little more yeah and it sounds way crispier because it doesn't have that like it doesn't have the have delay of the spring yeah yeah that's way better so this brings us to Friday morning, and it's time to take the Malibu into Columbus to get the front end aligned at Lucor Automotive. I had called Rich on Monday and told him that sometime this week I'd like to bring the car in. And despite the fact that he's busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger, Rich told me to bring it in anyway. Even though Rich has a doctor's appointment on Friday afternoon, he told me if I could bring the car in early in the morning, he'd work it in. Now, when I spoke to Rich earlier in the week, I explained to him that the car drove perfectly fine up until the point we had to replace the front spindle. Rich and I both felt like this should be a very minor, quick, in and out project that likely wouldn't require any new parts, or so we thought. You remember how things have been going for me lately, right? Well, Rich is about to experience it firsthand. I managed to make it to Lucor right after 10 o'clock in the morning. Rich met me outside and told me to pull it around back and pull it right up onto the alignment rack. He had the rack cleared and ready for me as soon as I pulled in and wasted no time getting started hanging the heads on the car. And I assured him that today's visit had nothing to do with his previous alignment. So what happened was somebody drilled out the spindles to the wrong size hole. So we had to replace the spindle and prior to that, the, it drove perfectly fine. And now it just pulls to the right just a tiny little bit and just enough to aggravate the shit out of me because I know it didn't do it before. You know what I mean? I get it. So that's why we're here. The last time this car was on the alignment rack was approximately 10,000 miles ago. And in that 10,000 miles, it's developed a considerable amount of wear in some of the steering components. I don't know what you're talking about, Rich. I only drive that car to church. Hey, I 
don't drive it that much. Or hard. I, don't, I never drive it hard. No, never, ever, ever. Unfortunately, neither one of us have a lot of time today to tear this car apart and replace a lot of suspension components. But Rich did do his best to get the car back in shape for me. Rich is obviously very thorough in the way he does his alignments, and that's precisely the reason anytime I need something aligned, I always bring it to Lucor. Uh, we changed the caster and camber a little bit to uh, counteract. It was a little bit low on the passenger side, so I raised it up on the passenger side to, to match or exceed a little bit the driver's side. It should counteract the, the pull. Yeah, it's got a little bit of wear in the upper ball joints, and probably because it's at its max travel every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, the max travel on the upper ball joints is probably causing them some suffering. Um, inner tie rod ends are a little bit loose, so you're going to want to address those. And uh, should be good to go. Be well, good that good idler arm too. I think I think you yeah. noticed that idler, idler arm was a little arm loose. Was bad too, so idler arm. I'd probably do idler arm, center link, and inner rod ends, and then put it back together. All right. Well, we'll schedule that in sometime when I get a chance to bring it in here and I can leave it for a while. Sounds good. How's that? Sounds great. You ready to go to lunch? Sure. Let's go. Thanks, See you, buddy. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Bill. As a way to say thank you to Rich for scheduling me in when he's so busy, I told him I'd take him to lunch to his favorite place right around the corner. As you all probably already realize, I couldn't do what I'm doing today if I didn't have people like Rich in my corner that I could count on when I need help. He's been a key component in our success both on and off the track with race cars and street cars alike. He's done the alignments on everything from my mom and dad's 55 Chevy up to Billy's Nova and the Falcon and of course my Malibu for the second time, which turned out to be more of a wellness check on the car rather than an official lineup. Out of all the cars our family owns, the Malibu tends to get the most miles put on it, mostly because it's easy to keep clean and it's the most comfortable to drive. Well, thanks for lunch, dude. You're welcome, man. Thank you for working me in this week. I really appreciate it. No problem. I appreciate you using us for your alignment needs. Yeah. Hey, uh, the next one that's coming up is Vicky's El Camino. We're going to put a small block in it. Okay. And I think I want to replace the front springs and do an alignment on it. And I'm sure you'll probably find a handful of things that need replaced on it. So I won't need you to just do that on the spot. I, that'll be a drop it off and let Rich tear into it kind of project. That sounds perfect. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Thank you. See you later. When I got back to the shop, Tanner and I pulled the Monte Carlo in and put it on the rack so we can start taking the wheels and tires off and get a game plan and a parts list put together so we can start putting brakes and suspension on the car next week. I also wanted to take advantage of the sunshine and get busy working on this creek problem out behind the shop. Because as it sits right now, if we need one of the trailers out back, we can't get it across the creek. Watching her spin around on that thing is the funniest thing I've ever seen. If you pay attention to any of the videos on my channel, you probably already know. She's just happy to be around her papa. That wherever I am, June Pup wants to be. It doesn't matter to her whether we're in the excavator or a race car. In June Pup's eyes, the most important thing is that no one gets near me without her permission. Anyway, June Pup and I worked till almost dark on the creek out behind the shop, and then I turned in early so I could get some rest so we could get up early Saturday because Vicky and I had made plans to take her El Camino up to Amish country. We're hoping to spend some time together today doing something that doesn't lead to stress and disappointment. Vicky and I like to do this at least once or twice a year just to get away from the shop and do a little shopping. Our first stop for the day was a pit stop in Granville to top off the El Camino with fuel before we head north up 661. You'll be bringing me up here next week too. What are you talking about? It's tulip festival time. Next week it opens. What? Yep, you get to bring me up this way next week. It was at this point I realized I'm gonna have my hands full with Vicky until she gets spring fever out of her system. I'm just hoping that this trip to Amish country takes care of the vast majority of it. Anyway, this brings us to stop number two for the day, Heine's Cheese Chalet in Berlin, Ohio. My parents and grandparents have been coming up here for years, and so have Vicki and I, ever since we were 16. But for some reason, this particular trip to Heine's turned out a little different than we expected. At first, everything seemed normal. We went inside and started shopping for cheese and beef sticks, but that's when we found the very first disappointment of the day. Typically, these refrigerated bins are filled full of cheese. What are you looking for first? Smoked bacon cheddar. But the bins are either completely empty or a complete and total mess. This place is cleaned out. Like, half the place is empty. The bins are empty except this one big hunk. Smoked bacon. <laughs> but it wasn't just the cheese bins that had problems. What is happening up here? Vicky loves chocolate, and especially the chocolate wall at Heine's. The back wall used to be 
chocolate and it's dog food. Where's all the chocolate jars? The mint meltaways. Where the hell's all the cheese? You remember what I said about trying to avoid disappointment today? Well, there wasn't anyone available to talk about it. Hell, we can get King Dongs anywhere. What the hell we come to Amish country to buy King Dongs for? First stop and we are striking out. We've been coming here since we were like teenagers and this is the first time I've ever been disappointed. So with a $20 block of smoked bacon cheddar cheese, Vicki and I hit the road in the El Camino for Walnut Creek in search for the ultimate Amish cheese and beef jerky experience. Now this place is relatively new and I've never been in there personally. Vicki always goes in by herself, but this time she managed to lure me inside by claiming that she needed me to come in and personally inspect the beef jerky and beef stick display which I reluctantly did. Evidently, this is the new go-to place. I would say. <laughs> Have you found the chocolate wall yet? Not yet, but the bakery's next. Now, I noticed that when she's picking out my beef jerky, she would quickly nab up whatever's hanging on the end of the hook. But when it comes to chocolate, sweets, or cookies, there's a different protocol. What the hell's that? It looks like a bag of Jimmy Danglers. And the protocol specifically used for picking out monster cookies takes all day. I gotta get the freshest ones in the back. You gotta know how to do this. In other words, you're gonna screw See? up their whole display. No, look, that was a better date. These ones in the way back are the fresher ones. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not the most patient person on the face of the earth, especially when it comes to picking out monster cookies. I couldn't take it anymore. Way too much estrogen in there for me. So I exited stage left out to the El Camino and sat in the parking lot and waited for Vicky to come out. Once we had the El Camino loaded down with cupcakes, cookies, cheese, beef sticks, and whatever else she found in Walnut Creek, we headed uptown to get some lunch. Typically, I try and talk her out of going to the Der Dutchman because I don't like waiting in line. Like I've mentioned before, I've got this whole problem with being patient. But after seeing how sad and disappointed Vicky was that the chocolate wall at Heine's had been restocked with dog food, I felt like I had no choice but to let her have her pick of places to get lunch. And it turns out we didn't have to wait that long anyway. Well, how's that turkey and noodles and gravy? Look at that, oh my gosh. It's almost the best I've ever had. Almost? Almost. Because if you said it was the best, then my feelings would be hurt. You notice how I sidestepped that one? It's good. After our really good lunch at the Der Dutchman, Vicky's ultimate day of Amish shopping resumed. I mean, we've covered all the food, the important stuff, but now there's like house and patio stuff. So once again, we hit the road in the El Camino, this time in search for house and patio stuff. I'm ready to go shopping. Ever since the new shop was completed, she's been itching to go shop for interior decorating things. And although there was a lot of stuff up there that she really liked, she had her heart set on some rocking chairs for the front porch of the new shop. And that led us here to a little place called Kaufman's Lawn Furniture that had anything and everything that you could possibly ever imagine to decorate and accessorize your porch, lawn, or swimming pool. It took us over an hour to look around and see most of what we wanted to see, but we obviously didn't get to look at everything. Vicki was primarily focused on rocking chairs and gliders, and her budget led her to the bargain basement bin in the back of the lot where they had some plain Jane wooden rockers stored in a cabin. She seemed completely content with them until she saw some of the nicer stuff that they had in the showroom indoors. Uh, I think I want one of everything. <laughs> no, seriously, this thing you're sitting in, uh, like maybe later in the fall, we need to come back and get this for the other side of the porch. We gotta pace ourselves. <laughs> and that's when my guilty conscience got the best of me. I had some money squirreled away in my wallet she didn't know about. When did that show up? What? So then what do we do about the rockers, though? You should have told me that you had money squirreled away for this. If I knew that you had money squirreled away, I wouldn't have spent so much time at the bakery looking at stuff. I would have been over here picking out furniture earlier. Oh, what yeah. Oh, they are. Try one. Well, I found something better. Now that, now that I know that you had money squirreled away, why would I get the plain old? I mean, those are cute and all, but those other ones are really good. So needless to say, I ended up unloading all the plain Jane rockers out of the El Camino and pulling the El Camino up to where we could load up all the bougie stuff that she found out front. Now I have to admit, part of my reasoning here was based on the fact that I'm getting out of staining those rockers by buying the nicer stuff. 
Regardless, Vicki works really hard for all of us, and she's definitely deserving of some nice furniture for the front porch. Once we had everything secured in the back of the El Camino, it was time to go inside and pay our bill. You know what they say, happy wife, happy life. What's happening there, squirrely locks? <laughs> it's been a busy weekend. It has been a very busy weekend. Did you enjoy your trip to Amish country? Yeah. Very yeah. much so. You pulled one on me. I was not expecting to come back with all that, the goodies in the bed. <laughs> oh, Camino, that was a nice little surprise there. Yeah. And everybody enjoyed it over the last couple of days. Like everybody's like, oh man, these are comfortable. Dad came down, played with the dogs, and yep. sat out there with me for a little while. Molly's been rocking Wyatt. He loves them. <laughs> yeah. So it's gone great. Yep. And we've got the creek pretty much cleaned up. I've been working on that. It's been very hectic here the last day or so. Yeah. We've had a lot going on. Oh, today was the eclipse. That was cool. That was Tiffany a flop. Came over. Well, it was... Okay, flop. So it didn't get as dark here. Flop. <laughs> As we thought it was but actually being able to put on the glasses and watch it get slowly get covered over that was cool so what do you have to discuss tonight i well i would like to tell everybody where we're going to be saturday oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. um we are going to be right here at our home track not far from home uh national trail raceway hebrew ohio uh gates open for spectators at noon and the racing starts around two okay and uh, the uh, if, if you want to check out the event page, Facebook, King of Columbus National Trails, check out the event page for all the other details. So we had been planning on either going to Texas or trails. It's been, it, it was up been in the, the air. Fence. Yeah. And um, we were waiting to see what the weather did. And then somebody bought a Pro Mod Dart. <laughs> we're going to blame your side of the family now, Thomas. Actually, I will say that a big trip just wasn't in the cards this week. No, because the, the Nova's not ready. The no. S10's really not I mean, ready. Billy just put the new engine in it. It's really untested. And to it's go, completely untested. Right. Like, to go that far untested is just not a good idea. It's just not in the cards. So, it's everything's really just kind of stacked against us. So, yeah. we're just going to stick local this weekend yes. and play it safe. Play it safe. Get some Low hits. expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to come out and see some good no prep racing, the track has not been raced on yet this year. There's been no test and tunes or anything, so it is going to be sketchy. Um, it's not going to be super fast. Um, the Falcon's going to be there. Oh, yeah. And Thomas. And Thomas. Our number two son. So, <laughs> so if we can get the dark there. The, Wait. the slow dart. The slow dart. <laughs> Is that really now what we're going to call Allison's no, dart? The, the slow dart? The OG. The OG okay. Dart. okay. Okay. That sounds better to me. <laughs> All right. So that's what's going on. Yes. I'm going to go back in and try to finish this editing and get this video up mm -hmm. so we can get something posted this week. Yes. Unfortunately, I have not had time to put together the giveaway details that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Well, I discussed in the mm -hmm. last video. But I did email Gina some design ideas Ooh. today that you are not yet aware of. I'm going to go get in your phone right now. And no, you you're not text. either. <laughs> but we'll try and have that up yeah. uh, once the weekend's over. We're going to go racing. Mm -hmm. I'll try and get a video up uh, early next week and we'll get all the details uh, ironed out because mm -hmm. I've got some new designs that I want to get finalized mm -hmm. that I think a lot of my carburetor friends are going to like. Oh, boy. Hey, and I've got glitter stuff on the way, too. They should check that out on the website. I know the girls, I already have been getting emails. What's the glitter stuff? And I've, it's out there. Go and the new tumblers. Out. Yeah, oh my gosh. Listen. Oh, good grief. Here we go. Green. How can you not love this mint green? I'll bet it's the least sells. No. No? No, and they love the patriotic one, too. Of course they love the patriotic yeah, one. That's pretty cool. Look at that. I like it. Yeah, very All right. cool. 
All right, guys, so have a good week. We'll be back soon. It, I just thought it was funny because he's just twisting and she's just sitting there doing nothing. Watching her spin around on that thing is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Your little Ford friend stopped by. A <laughs> little oh. bit of a... Uh... Less than I thought. You say disappointment. Yeah, it's like sex for me. Once every hundred years, only lasts four minutes, and it's a total disappointment. <laughs>